Live from the Outpost Studios in Columbus, Ohio, you're listening to All Natural Being with Brian Brody. Brought to you by IPMNation.com. Get ready for the gong heard round the world. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All Natural Being with Brian Brody is designed to shake your sense of self to the core. It's full contact psychology with an empowering twist, a philosophical loofah for your soul. For those of you not ready or comfortable releasing your inner superhuman, listener discretion is advised. Here's your host, Brian Brody. And thank you for joining me here at All Natural Being. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm told this is what? The 300th and 74th, is that right? The 374th episode of the number one rated show here on IPMNation.com. You're in to All Natural Being, and I'm damn glad to have you. And the gong heard around the world just seconds ago, broadcast as it happens, thanks to our friends at Telestream's Wirecast, but broadcast as it happens right here on ipmnation.com slash trnow. I guess you know that if you're listening in there. And also multicast live on Facebook over at our allnaturalbeing.com and also our app. But however you come to hang with us, we're always pumped to have you live from the transitional radio uplink here in, well, they kept threatening snow, but it hasn't come yet, here in Columbus, Ohio, with rebroadcast on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, you know, all of the usual suspects. But we'll get into this tonight, maybe not so more, so much anymore on Twitter. But we'll get to that. Greetings wherever you are, here in the Garden of the Mortals, the labyrinth of life itself, your shot at running the table, at leveling out, wherever you see fit. You don't need someone's permission. You don't need permission from anyone. Here's your chance to once again be mouthwatering to yourself. It's in your blood. Now you just have to get your mind to remember it. That's why we're here to be your amnesia buster. I like the idea of a chisel or a big squeegee or one of those leaf blowers. But in any event, your friendly force, always putting your heart's highest priority top of the list, reinstalling and reinstating the true wit, wisdom, and wallop of your inner whisper. We're just talking about rebooting your robust, finding your ferocious, commencing your counterpunch all in time to outbrew the brutal that is the cut and shuffle that fate can deal you on a daily basis. And for once and for all, put a smile on your face. When you decide to bring your own bold, it's that very simple. But before we hit it this evening, and it's a big evening, hello to my friends here in the United States and Canada, Mexico, the UK, those in Ecuador, China, the Philippines, Brazil, India, Australia, Germany, Italy, and France, Nigeria, Turkey, Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Belgium, Sweden, Israel, South Africa, Egypt, Puerto Rico, Kenya, the Netherlands, Iran, Colombia, Greece, Ireland, Argentina. List keeps growing. We're fired up. Peru, Austria, Poland. To those joining us from all over the globe, it's great to have you with us. And I truly am, as I said, fired up to be driving your bandwagon, to be your virtual hitchhiker if you're out and about on the go. You know what I love about riding shotgun? You know what I love about being your vaccine? What I love about being your bodyguard is that I get to hang with you. So what are we waiting for? Here's our opportunity to mortal up once and for all. So what do you say? 
let's go kick in some doors. And I mentioned it in the uh, uh, over on uh, Facebook a little earlier. Let me get over there real quick, say hello to some folks. Or you know what? Let me do this first. Let me go over here. And one of the things that I wanted to kick around with you uh, this evening, let's see, I sent a text. Yeah, I, I do this all the time. I sent a text to myself. And one of the things I want to talk about this evening is for 10 years now, I suspect, or thereabouts, I've worked on building a Twitter following, right? It's Maybe it's more than 10 years now that I think about it. And, you know, you put up little pithy sayings and quotes and pictures and this and that. But I saw this thing today that says Twitter is now clamping down. Talking about clamping down on abuse. Hi, buddy. How are you? You want to come and say hello real quick? All right, come on. <laughs> All right, hold on. Who you got there? What do you got going on here? You want to say hello to everybody? Look right Hi. at the. Hi. Say thanks for coming by. Thanks for coming by. Okay, say sleep tight. See you tomorrow. Sleep tight. See you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. One of my executive producers, Blyden, joining us. Thank you, sir, very much. So what I got earlier was this thing about Twitter, and they're saying, oh, we're really going to crack down now. We're really going to do everything we can to make sure. What was the thing? Uh, they, they were talking about shaming people. They were talking about uh, all the different things that you're no longer allowed to say. Now, I'm not suggesting that you and I would ever say anything to be hurtful to another person, right? I'm not, I'm not saying any of that. But if you listen to it, they said any user who deliberately targets a person with abuse, including misgendering, and dead naming, dead naming, I had to look that term up, can now be reported and banned from the platform. The new section of Twitter's terms of services reads, we prohibit targeting individuals with repeated slurs, I get that, repeated slurs, tropes, or other content that intends to dehumanize, degrade, or reinforce, reinforce negative or harmful stereotypes about a protected category. This includes targeting, misgendering, or dead naming transgender individuals. Now, again, I'm not saying that any one of us would run out and deliberately do something to offend someone like that. But my question is, at what stage of the game do we have to admit that I've become an enabler, right? I allow Twitter to say, oh, okay, well, you know, if you have uh, thin skin, you're protected here. Dead naming. I saw something the other day of stripping someone of their humanity. How do you strip someone of their humanity? You know, we'll, we'll get to the point, we'll go, oh, we don't want kids drinking. Uh, you never want anyone drinking and driving, but you don't want kids drinking before, what is it now, 21 years old. Uh, you don't want uh, the little ones smoking cigarettes. You don't, you know, you do stuff to keep, oh, you don't want to enable bank robbers. You don't want to enable drug dealers. Uh, you don't want to enable, think of any crime. You don't want to be a co-conspirator in any crime. But if I stay on Twitter, I'm basically enabling a concept of watering down a human mind to such a degree that it thinks it can be offended by the words of another. Look, I've said this countless times. If you can be wounded by the words, if you can be provoked by the pronouncements of another person, it's time to take a class. You want to sign up for all these damn online classes? You want to sign up for an online class? Sign up about how to have a little more inner orientated sense of self. Not so much always looking outside of yourself for thumbs ups and thumbs downs or retweets or shares or whatever the mashugana is, right? Whatever the marketplace is selling at that time. But how about having a little more center-oriented wherewithal where you believe in yourself? You believe in putting your heart's highest priority top of your list. So I could stand here for the whole, I don't know, I guess I got another 15 minutes uh, before we start taking calls. I could stand here for this whole time and blather on about, oh, the evils of social media and blah, 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 all this stuff. Or I could say, you know what? That's it. I'm done. At what point do people stand up to Twitter and go, so now you're going to suggest that you can be dead named? You can have your humanity stripped. How thin-skinned do they want to raise an entire generation of folks to be? Right? All these hotheads wrapped in thin skin are busy. Oh, I was offended. Oh, well, you hurt my feelings. Oh, well, tough luck. Right? So for me, I thought about it. I've been pacing back and forth thinking about it all day, and I go, okay, great. Yeah, we can do a whole show. What? Oh, that guy Jack over at Twitter, he's a 
evil, evil guy, right? Forget the First Amendment, forget this and that. Now, for everyone that's gonna jump here in the thread and go, now, wait a minute, you have the terms of service, right? You have the, you know what the terms of service are. So they're a private company, although a public, a public platform, they're a private, or maybe they're a, 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 a public company now, but they get to set their terms of service. Great. Well, here's my terms of service, Twitter. I'm not going to enable you anymore. So let me say hello to everyone here in the thread. And then maybe you can help me kick this around a little bit uh, this evening. Rita, good evening. Thank you. I will absolutely tell Blyden you said Heidi. Shane, thank you so very much. You know, Shane's back, as we talked about before, his run 2020 for the White House. It's kind of like I mentioned Shane's name. It's just like the old movie Beetlejuice. You say Beetlejuice three times and he shows up. So, Shane, nice to see you once again. Hope you're busy preparing your run. Alice, good evening. Marcellus, hello, dang spell check. Hi, Marcellus. Nice to have you back. Hell, okay, Henry. Henry, nice to see you as well. Heather, thank you for joining us. Rita, as I mentioned, thank you. Hey, buddy, to you as well, Doug. Thank you for joining us. David Ray Bowman is back with us. Thank you so very much for joining us here at All Natural Being. Marie as well. Thank you so very much. Henry says, like I say, we're heading to the point where good morning is going to be seen as a demand and companies like Twitter will be damning their request to have a good day. I, well, here's the thing, Henry, and, I, and I, I think this is what's just got my, you know, just made me think about this all day long was that I'm not going to be a co-conspirator in the watering down of human wherewithal. So I've been doing Twitter for 10 years and I wanted to throw it out to everybody. Hey, Karen, good evening. Nice to see you here at All Natural Being. I'm not going to be a co-conspirator anymore, right? Because think about it. If you're driving a car and your friend runs into a stop and rob and robs them, or he comes out, hops in the car and goes, go, 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 go. Well, you're driving the getaway car. They'll charge you with a robbery just as quickly as they'll charge the guy or the girl. Don't want to mansplain. The guy or the girl that held the gun to the... This is the clerk's head in the first place to get the money and the Funyuns. Oh, and maybe a quart of chocolate milk before they get out the door. But you're just as guilty if you drive the, the getaway car, right? We know that conspiring to commit a conspiracy, you know, all kinds of people can get together and talk about it. But as soon as one of the acts of what, it, what you were talking about, as soon as one of those acts takes place, everybody that talked about it is guilty of that conspiracy. Well, I'm just, I'm to the point where I just don't know if I want to be involved in the conspiracy anymore, I don't know if I can feel good about saying, oh, well, you know what? Knock it off Twitter. But then I keep giving them my business. I keep giving them the platform or at least to be able to run the platform, run your platform any way you want. But sooner or later, we're all going to pay for the watering down of human wherewithal. We're all going to pay by convincing people, oh, their feelings can be hurt by the words of another. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too much. <laughs> I can't take. Oh, will you help me? So that's what I wanted to kick around tonight. What does everyone else think about it? Henry says, "Good for you, Brian. It's long overdue. Where enabling needs to be stopped." I think so. John, what do you think? Shane, what do you think? Oh, Shane's busy catching up with his mom. Hi, Shane's mom. Rita, what do you think? Right? Because yeah, I've invested a lot of time. I've invested a lot of energy, and I was thinking that well, here's how we should do it. Instead of me right? Just going ahead and canceling Twitter tonight, maybe tomorrow night or what would be even better, maybe Wednesday or Thursday night, last show of the week. Why don't we go ahead and broadcast live? I'll check with Wayne. Maybe we can simulcast to Twitter and I'll taunt them to closing my account. I'll, right? Because I could just quit. and I go oh, over, cancel my account. and Everyone will go, boy, you show them. But what if we broadcast the show live to Twitter and then taunt them, make them shut me down? Because who, finally, solution equals big boy panties. I got you. Or big girl panties, right? David Ray, I'm with you. Shane says we're already paying for it. I absolutely agree. Oh, well, that hurt my feelings. Well, tough luck. My feelings are hurt every day. I'm hurting right now standing here, right? It doesn't mean that I stop. You know, you just keep going. Well, the words of another. And you look at it. Oh, how can you dead name someone? Dead name someone. I mean... I get walking up with a shotgun. I get walking up with a knife. Oh, you know what? I better not show the knife on camera. So instead of showing the knife on camera, because then I'll get banned for showing a weapon on camera, how about I just show a magnifying glass, all right? I'll show that. That's got a handle, and it's black. So forget what you saw here. There was no knife, right? So, right? If you want to look in, you want to get a close-up view of people, we're encouraging entire generations of people to be snowflakes, that they can be triggered that they need safe spaces, 
You know, I thought about this today. Henry posted, I think Wayne posted a bunch of taunting them. I'm all for that. Lee, I say we do it. Now, this should also be, <laughs> this should also be the part. John, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Karen, I absolutely agree. That's your feelings. Got nothing to do with me. Exactly, Shane. That should be your motto in 2020. John, thank you for joining us. And, and Lee, I'm with you. Kathy, thank you so very much for joining us. Heather, I never liked Twitter. So glad I didn't hop on that bandwagon. Love that idea. I know, Heather, I wasn't as smart as you were. I hopped on that bandwagon. Romper room with the magnifying glass. I love, I love it. So maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe Thursday night we'll simulcast live. We'll check with Wayne. Simulcast live to Twitter, and then I'll taunt them. I'll make them ban me. And by, uh, by doing nothing more than telling them they have permission to call me a mick. They have permission to call me bald. They have permission to call me a hair lip. Ooh, they have a permission to call me shunt head. They can call me whatever they want. I simply couldn't care. Like Shane says, whatever your feelings are, let me have it. David Ray Bowman says, I put on my big boy panties or big girl panties as it were, right? No, no, no. I'm not saying that I wear big girl panties. I'm just saying if you're a woman and you happen to be listening, it's not all mansplaining, right? So I'm not, I got to watch David Ray. He, 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 he entraps me all the time, right? So no, I'm not saying I wear big girl panties. Although if, if you do, well, what, what am I to say, right? So, but here's the deal. Unfortunately, in the biz, social media is a necessary hazard. Uh, Shunthead, I like that. Thank you, David. And I've been thinking about that. In the biz, social media is a necessary hazard. Well, who knows? Maybe one day I'll get kicked off here on Facebook. But then we know with the new uh, 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 cloud thing that we have, Wayne, help me with the term, with the new cloud thing that we have, we can broadcast this show right to our app. Maybe we won't do Twitter or Facebook anymore. But really? We need a safe space? We, we're encouraging entire... Uh, let me just say this. I, I started this earlier. Henry went ahead and put a little something up about it. Uh, yeah, I'm leaning to shunted myself, Heather and David. Henry put up a little something about, what is it? Th someone correct me if I'm wrong. 300 million miles away. And the human brain, a group of human brains, were able to figure out how to get an orbiter. Not just one orbiter, but three. But we'll get to that in a minute. How to get another Land Rover to Mars. And they nailed the landing, lat, long, perfect, from 300 million miles away. Now, they didn't nail the landing like Nadia Komenich getting a 10 from the Russian judges in the Olympics way back when, right? We're not talking that. We're talking human minds got together and figured out the algorithms, figured out, you could say, oh, Brian, it's all done with a joystick. They were watching the cameras. No, they weren't. It was all done with computer programs well in advance, and they kept tweaking and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. That's a human freaking mind. Talk about your all-natural being. But then the rest of us left here on Earth, we're going to get caught up in the Meshuggah. Oh, I was triggered. He said some very mean things to me. Really? On the day that we land... Oh, and there's two more. You know, and they got about the size of a... You know, a couple boxes of shoes stacked up, the size of a briefcase, right? These two other satellites are flying by just to make sure the lander makes it there. And then they're rating, radio a signal back from the lander back to NASA in California. I mean, that kind of brilliance, that kind of sheer mental grit. And we're going to suggest that people can be dead named. It, it just can't be a human brain that comes up with this stuff. There has to be. It just can't be. Well, I think Darren, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Kenneth, thank you so very much for joining Joseph, nice to see you as well, brother. Thank you so very much. David Ray Bowman, we landed a LM and a lunar rover on the moon in 1971 and 33,000 of drum hardwired memory. Absolutely true. Hello, Darren, to you as well. But how do we come up with this? The same, allegedly, the same human brain that calculates what it will take to land a human created machine, by the way. And not only land to, to, it was going thousands of miles an hour, and then to deploy the, to pitch the heat shields, and then to deploy the parachute, and then to know to shoot all those uh, extra pulse beams so that it could, you know what was moving? When it touched down, do you know what the speed it was moving? From 300 million miles away. Do you know what the speed this thing was moving at when it touched down? down. Well, there's a reason they don't call it crash landing. And I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm just guessing. But you know what it was moving? Five miles an hour. 
You run after a park, unless you're Alec Baldwin, right, looking for someone to beat up on. You run after an open parking space at about five miles an hour. Kathy says, this is triggering my funny. Oh, thank you, Kathy, very much. Shane says, that's an excuse for not being able to handle their own stuff. I was triggered. Whatever. You're thin-skinned and need to grow up. That's all I'm saying. Henry Knoll says, in fact, the InSight vehicle was notifying the Jet Propulsion Laboratory exactly where it was. So everyone knew where it was. And I listened to this. I mean, I'm watching it on my phone. I'm all excited, right? I'm watching it on my phone. She goes, okay, it's this uh, many meters up, this many meters up, this many meters up. All right, it's 20 meters up. It's now traveling at five miles an hour. From 300 million miles away, the same day Twitter decides that you can be name shamed if if I think you're a miss and I call you a mister or I think you're a mister and I call you a... Whatever name shaming it is, whatever it is that we, about being stripped of your humanity, what the heck? Well, let me figure out all the buttons here. Oh, so I'm going to this one? Am I going to this one? All right, I'm going here. Good evening. Welcome to All Natural Being. Who's this? Oh, I lost him. Hey, you're still there? Hey, there you are. There you are. Well, not, not quite 300 million miles away, but we got an equator evol in involved. Yes, you wish we do. Yes, we do. Yeah, so Henry, we before, we get, to, to do it. Yeah, before we God, get to uh, what your show is going to be uh, tonight, let, let me get your vote. I say we ask Wayne to figure out how to broadcast live to Twitter, and then we taunt them. Because, because what kind of PR value? You know, Dave, uh, as he said, oh, you know, in days of social media, what if I could get them to shut me down midstream? What if I could get yeah. them to cancel my account for doing nothing more than calling myself a hair, uh, right? Calling myself a mick. What if I could get them to shut me down? What's the PR value of that? What say you? Exactly. Oh, it's, it's, it's insane, isn't it? I, I it just, is. I social media i swear right it's getting crazy and on the day when right the jet propulsion labs pull off just i mean i'm just always amazed with what the sheer brilliance of an all-natural human mind can do oh but we don't want to be triggered we need safe spaces <laughs> we need hot chocolate and stuffed animals right yeah, oh and that's we're, it. and we're going to get someone kicked off campus for coming to give a speech because all oh, those words hurt what? Yeah. Right? Those words hurt. Oh, that's hurtful. That's hurtful. No, right? An ingrown toenail is hurtful. Oh, I can tell you. Uh, oh, what's you the go. thing with your exactly. Achilles heel? Heel spurs. They're painful. I've yep. had a heel spur before. They're painful, right? Absolutely. But words? Isn't that something? That's something for me. All right. Sorry, my friend. Okay, so what are you talking no, about no, tonight? Fine. Uh, uh, thinking you know, revision. I, I and I totally understand that because it's uh, so frustrating. To, 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 you, to, to have to stand there and watch what you say, and, and, and it's not necessary. It's just because people just have, they get the feelers hurt, and, um, and you know, and, and, that's, and that is what pe we get to be known as, as far as humans are concerned. Not that we can take something and launch it uh, from here and uh, right. place it, you know, 300 and some odd million miles away, yeah. right at the time it was supposed to be the land. Yes. I mean, it was supposed to land just before 3 o'clock, and it landed at 2 <laughs> 56 or something. Yeah. Um, I'll bet you Wayne you know, is after, praying. After being in space for six months. Yeah. I mean, just think about I, that. I think about it. I'll bet you Wayne is praying that I end this show with that kind of precision. And I'm like yeah. three feet from the, I'm not even, I'm like 30 inches. 300 <laughs> million miles away. They nail yep. the landing and we're going to be upset because someone triggered us. We're going to, yep. the same <laughs> human mind. I mean, if, if we, if they're just different species that have evolved. Right? There's a storm coming. I, I sent a message to a friend earlier going, there's a storm coming. And I be, I'm beginning to believe that that's it. The storm is everyone's going to stop, start betting against themselves. Everyone is going to think it's okay to be thin-skinned. Everyone's no. going to think it's okay to be, oh, I was hurt by your words. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you step a little closer? Right? I, I just yeah, don't get it. How that made me feel. Yeah, oh, let me see how that made me feel. Yeah, yeah, here's Wayne's eyes. <laughs> 300 million miles away. Yeah. And you know, away, Wayne. At the very least, Wayne, you could send me a little icon of, yeah, he sent me the watch. Could you find me an emoji <laughs> of a spaceship, like a landing Mars rover? Or maybe check with Joseph. Joseph's on the ball, too. So, I'm sorry, hey, one more time. <laughs> what do you want to talk about tonight on uh, Thinking Revision at the bottom of the hour? Wayne's going to put the link up here in the feed. What are you, uh, what are you kicking around tonight? 
Well, I'm going to go with Walt mm. Kelly's uh, quote. Uh, we have met the enemy, and he is, is us. Yeah. And find out about what it is that uh, that in, what's the individual perspective on how can we what do we have to do to unify the human race? I mean, what do we have to do in order to reverse the flow in the direction that that the human race seems to be going? It just it's going to hell in a handbasket, and how do we change it? And I'd love to get some people's opinions as to what do we need to do? Uh, what it would be the best way that we could approach? getting the human race to get back together again. Henry, let me say real quick, Darren says, I trigger young people on purpose. Darren, then you, you know what dinner's like at my house, Darren. Absolutely. Heather Smart, thank you so very much. Rocket ship's landing. I like it. Um, Candace, good evening. <laughs> nice to see you. Henry, I'll tell you another thing. I don't know if we can get humanity to come together anymore. If you, if you I, have a mind I, that can program a lunar landing 300 million miles away, and it's trying to have yep. a conversation with a person that thinks their humanity can be stripped, they can be dead-named or dead-shamed or whatever it's called, and that they're triggered uh, if they don't have a stuffed animal, a safe space, and some warm cocoa. You're never going to get those two minds to meet. It's like what really no. ticks me off is when you watch the, oh, well, we're anxious to reach across the aisle. No, you're not. We, no, the, I don't think the American people need politicians reaching across the aisle. We, the last <laughs> thing we need to do is for them to get together and really conspire against us. I got to tell you, found one, Marie. Thank you. All right. So all the emojis of the landing spaceship. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Now, if there's an emoji of a winning lottery number, uh, it, please just <laughs> throw that up for me and I'll, I'll use that. So, Henry, you're talking about how we can unite the human race. I think it's a foregone a conclusion, uh, brother, that we can't. But if anyone can figure out how to do it, I'm sure it will be you and the good people, the fine people that listen every night to Thinking Reinvisioned. That's it, exactly. And that's what I'm hoping, because I'm at a loss at this point, and uh, it just doesn't seem like it makes any sense anymore. And I just want to make sure that I'm in the right frame of mind to thinking, yeah. you know? Well, yeah, you called the wrong place if you want to be in the right frame of mind. Sorry. Right? It's just like me to hijack your head with three minutes and 38, seven, 36, Wayne, seconds to go. So I promised I'll let you go. <laughs> Henry, thank you so much. Have a great show, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. You got it. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Bye now. All right, so uh, there was so much that I wanted to get to tonight. Henry says, Mars, pop. Um, there's so much that I want to get to tonight. And later this week, I'd like to have uh, Ken Ratliff back on from Window Armor because there was a lockdown drill uh, in one of my son's schools today. And when he came home, he was just traumatized by it. He was scared by it. He was, so I'd like to get some perspective. Oh, Ken, here you are. Had to Google to figure out what was happening on Twitter. I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm with you, Kenneth. But here's what I'd like to do in the closing minute that I'm going to have. I uh, thank you, Karen, very much for joining us. You're on a roll tonight, Shane. He always is, which is why I'm going to vote for him in 2020, Karen. But Kenneth, so my son came home tonight and says, oh, well, you know, they went through some lady named Alice. They did these things and this and that. And he's scared to death, right? He's like, well, why do we lock the doors? Why do we have to shut the windows? Why do we have to be quiet? Why do we do those things? So at some point, Kenneth, I'd like to have a discussion uh, and with everyone here in the thread, maybe a little later in the week or the beginning of next week, like what is the real protocol for active shooters and violent intruders? Was, you know, there, because there's some people that say that our kids were just scaring our kids to death. There's other people that say, oh, you, you know, never up, never in. You got to practice for these kind of things. So That'll be the next thing that I'd like to talk about. But for this evening, in getting ready to wrap it up, there's against, as I said today earlier on Facebook, against all odds is written all over you. What are you going to do about it? You and I, every day, we get up and face a life that it's against all odds. People want to talk about, oh, it's three trillion to one that you were born. Yeah, how about the odds of being alive at the end of the day? I'd like to calculate those astronomical numbers since we seem hell bent on talking about rocket ships tonight. Thank you all very much, right? Since I seem, uh, that's all I want to talk about. But, you know, talk about astronomical numbers. What's an astronomical number that you can assign to any one of us making it through the end of the day, the week, the month, the year, right? We've got against all odds written all over us. So what are we going to do with the time that we do have left? What are we going to do with the time that we are here? All right, I've only got a minute left to go. Speaking of time left, we're heading down a very precarious pathway, Henry says. Don't forget, Wayne, will you throw the link up to his show in the feed, please? I'm down with that. Thank you, Kenneth, very much. I hoped uh, that you would be. All right, remember, all natural being, it's within you to rise to any 
challenge. We'll go ahead and kick around some of the school stuff a little bit later in the week. Don't forget, uh, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow's only Tuesday. Oh, maybe we'll, we'll hang out tomorrow and have a little more fun. Um, that's my thing, as I know it is, Kenneth, as I know it is. All right, well, because Kenneth is a school superintendent, so he'll be able to tell us uh, all about it. And then don't forget, Wednesday, 1 p.m., the 28th, I go in, uh, affectionately calling it punt the shunt, I think. is Okay, going to live, love, life, and be happy. Heather, I'm absolutely with you. Joseph says, peace out. I will use that as my cue. Thank you all so very much for joining me here on All Natural Being. We will see you tomorrow night. Thank you.